I'm going to be giving you a problem that I'm going to ask you to do as an individual. It is a problem that will be very similar to one of the problems that we saw yesterday. It will leap out at you which problem I'm speaking of. And what I would like you to do is solve it in the manner of one of the three strategies that we looked at yesterday. Okay? So this activity is designed to give teachers a little bit more of a, of a hands-on experience. First of all, analyzing student work and thinking about it, and then as teachers making that teacher decision that you have to make in your classroom, which is which are the ones that I want to focus on and in what order do I want to focus on those strategies. And the chicken and goats problem can be solved using similar strategies as the, the bike and trike problem. And that's what I had participants do. I said I asked them to solve it using one of the strategies that we looked at. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, just to kind of emphasize the strategies that we did and take another look back at them. But also it's really important for teachers to try to solve that problem in any way that they, they can at first, but then also to kind of go back and try to find as many different strategies and, and solution methods as they can to kind of prepare them what students might come at them with. It was interesting how much variety there was in even people who did the same strategy. Anyone want to just reflect as problem solvers? I felt a lot more confident about my answer. Um, yesterday I looked at equations first because that's my natural training, but today I did the picture and when the minute I saw the picture I was like, I know, it's 6 and 16. I don't need to check, I don't need to think, it's done. The heart of this activity was really to give teachers a, a bunch of examples of student work, actual student work, and to give them an opportunity to look at that work and, and to think about, well, how did different students approach it? How are those approaches similar to approaches that we took? To give them a sense of the richness of the student creativity that comes out. And so the activity at first was just to look at the student work and think about, you know, what's going on? What do you like about each strategy? What might you ask a student to take them further into it? Well, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 15. Okay, these are just the number of goat legs. Number of legs, yeah. But then 24, I didn't know what that was. She's the first. 12, oh, no, it's 10, 11, 12, oh, 13, 14. Oh my god, you're right. He ran out of paper. You're right. I wonder what I would, what would you say to him. Well, she didn't spell it out. Well, I mean, I guess he would have to explain to you kind of where his thinking's going. Right. And I, I think that's the hard part in, in evaluating it is because you can't. I can't say, so, so what are you thinking? So, well, what else could we do? And I think that would kind of lead you in, in, in more oh, yeah. guidance for him. So that was the first step. The second step was for the teachers to get into groups. And if you had to pick three, if you were going to focus on three, which three would you pick? Um, and what order would you, would you put them in? We gave them the task of teachers looking at the student work and as a group kind of thinking about choosing which students the, whose work they would ask to come up and in what order. And then, you know, in a couple of minutes we're going to have a debrief about how they went into making, what were all the parts of, that go into making those decisions. And then, R-A-F-I-E. And the goal there was to kind of just to start the conversation and see what similarities there were, and there were. And so that was kind of an interesting conversation to see, well, it seemed like a lot of different groups working in different parts of the room came up with the same thing. As a teacher, you're thinking, what do I want students to get out of this working on this problem? What mathematics do I want them to get? What sense of problem-solving strategies do I want to get? What, you know, how do I want to tap this into our conversations about perseverance. And so with those questions in mind, you're looking at your student's work and you're thinking, what's the first work we're going to look at, the second and the third, to kind of create this arc of a conversation. Every group chose Liza Lewis somewhere in the first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the first, first two, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if, uh, someone, uh, maybe a group that made that decision? Someone want to talk? Liza and Luis is it's more visual. That particular example is very concrete and I think it's a starting point for algebraic thinking. Showing it visually um, and getting to that answer, everybody can agree upon the answer. So that's, you know, when you move on to the other strategies, there's no questioning that that's the, you know, that that's the right answer and you can talk about other things. And that, vis that picture allows you to, to get that with the whole group right from the starting point. If a student doesn't get it, they're going to benefit most from Luis and Liza. And then Michelle was kind of random data, but there was some sense to it. And then as you moved on, Mary, I think, was the best example of guess and check, and it was well organized, and you could see her thought process. But with Joan, where she says, I need 12 more legs, every goat gives me two, 12 divided by 2 is 6, you start to see more algebra, more math jumping into the, pro the process. 
there's a lot of creative teachers and teachers have a lot of intuition and, and understanding of their students and so just to give them a the experience of going through that process of figuring out the order that the work would appear in. But what I really like about this also is right here, the turning point. Because this, I think this is the turning point when you could actually see that the student realized without actually talking to the student, right here they realize that something is going on. And in terms of looking for student work to put up, that's a great thing to look for, the turning point. And so that's that was part of the process of this. You know, it's, it's really in the same way that we really are, are encouraging teachers to work with students to do something and then to have a moment of reflection. We're doing the same thing with teachers. We want you to do an act that's very important to your teaching and then have an opportunity to reflect on it. So that was the goal. That was the goal of this activity. Mm -hmm.